for you with over eight you know million downloads or whatever you have but you yourself are driving perpetual traffic how did you come to the realization that there's more to this than just capture amplify and modify well i mean it was um it was just sort of an idea hatched out of about five or six years ago that there was a need in the market to talk about how to really leverage a lot of the social platforms and there wasn't really a whole lot of information that was out there I mean, this is six seven years ago so uh Fortunately, myself and Ryan Dice had pre-existing relationships. So we talked about joining forces to a certain degree and creating a podcast. And here we are six years later with, with 8 million downloads. We get about 200,000 per month. And uh, the thing just keeps growing and growing. And you know, our goal is to be the number one marketing podcast in the world and to influence millions of people and help them scale and grow their businesses through paid traffic, but also just traffic just in general. And then we also focus on the other side of the equation, which is the conversion side. So, you know, all the traffic in the world that goes to a crappy offer doesn't necessarily grow a business. So we talk about that a lot on the show. And, you know, I've got a great co-host. It sort of brings a different vibe to the whole equation, uh, Kasim Aslam, who is a, a Google expert. And we bring on a lot of different folks to um, ultimately just help people, which is very much like, you know, what you, what you want to do with, uh, with your business and what your goal is, is to influence people in a positive way and, and help them scale and grow. And um, we just so happen to run a lot of traffic. We spend a lot of money on Facebook and Instagram and all the social platforms. So that gives us a pretty uh, good bed of knowledge in which to talk about what we've learned inside our agency and then pass that on to others, which is the whole goal of everything here. You are you're truly one of the first 100% virtual agencies. And this was far before COVID. Um, what advantages were there that you were going into your fourth or fifth year of already having a, a virtual agency while everybody else was scrambling to re-engineer their business and some of their epiphanies and aha moments were already figured out by you years ago? Yeah, it was it was a big advantage. I mean, now it's kind of cool to be a virtual company or it's hip or, you know, it's just more relevant to how businesses operate today. But uh, what we found is, I, I mean, I basically did it out of necessity. I mean, I had a wife that wanted to travel the world and have location independence. And, uh, you know, at that time, about 10, 12 years ago, I was an affiliate. So you could basically, you could work wherever you wanted to work, got out of that, and then started taking on individual customers. And the big part of it is how we manage the team and how we create a, a virtual culture, which 12 years ago, I was told by lots of people that, there's no way you can actually create a virtual culture for an organization. And we've created a high performance, you know, sports tr team driven culture, which really is something that has allowed us to scale and grow. And, and we hire for that. We promote for that. We develop for that. And our people are the reason why we've uh, achieved this level of success. And, and uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to produce fantastic results for our customers in a performance driven marketing world and, and we've been able to do that so yeah virtual was um more of a necessity and and you know now we sort of you know i have other ceos and founders that come to me and say how did you guys actually do it all those years give us some tips and tricks and a lot of it just comes back to human contact and and keeping the the goals in mind for customers but also marrying that with personal development for your people which we've been able to do in a, in a virtual culture which has been successful